Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I color grade 12-bit Sigma DNG from the Sigma FP. Now, this is the way that feels best for me, and like all guides, my method is only worth as much as you value the images that I have created with it. So, as you can see, I'm using DaVinci Resolve 17, and this is because I like to use the old RE Log C when color space transforming, so I have not updated. But you can use 18, and I think it should have the exact same effect. So let's get started. As you can see, this clip right here, shot with the Sigma FP, has already been graded. And I've used, or I've color graded it with the Blackmagic color space. Now, I think it looks OK, it looks pretty nice. But I'm going to show you today in this guide how to make it look like this, which is using the Ari colors. I've always preferred the Ari colors, you know, even with Blackmagic cameras. I often change it to the Ari colors. I just think it, I don't know, I just think this looks very cinematic and looks very nice. But if you do prefer this look, then I'm sure there are many other content creators that can show you that. But this is the look I'm going for. So how do I achieve that? Let's start from scratch. So this is the same clip. We're going to go to the Camera Raw tab, change it to Clip. And then the color space, I'm going to change to Black Magic Design and Black Magic Design Film to get as much dynamic range as possible. And I will select Highlight Recovery. And in general, I almost always decrease the highlights as much as possible, just so I don't ever clip my highlights. Now, we're going to work with the Ari colors. You know, I've done that for many cameras, including Fujifilm. So this way, uh, I'm going to select this node and go to Ari in the LUTs and then add the Ari Alexa Log C to Rec 709. Now, it's quite underexposed. In order to, in, to uh, gain exposure, you can do this with the Camera Raw tab, but for me personally, I don't find that this always feels good. Sometimes I feel as though it has a little bit too much noise, but I'm going to show you another method, which is using the HDR wheels. Now, I find the HDR wheels to feel very nice. So we're going to change the exposure with the global wheel on the far right. And we are going to, let's just say, change exposure here. Now, you can change it higher. But in general, I don't like to go past 0.5. Because when you increase the HDR wheels too much, sometimes I feel as though it looks a little too photorealistic, a little too HDR-y. And what I mean by that is that Sometimes I feel as though it looks, the highlights look a little bit too bright. And you can see that on the skin, the highlight roll off is a little bit, you know, too jarring. And I don't really like that look. I actually find it kind of offensive. So I'm going to stick with 0.5 and adjust the rest of the exposure with the primary color wheels. Now, the contrast is clearly too high. So I'm going to increase the midtones or the gamma until, well, let's first change the frame. Let's do find a frame where we can see the face clearly. And I'm going to, I'm looking at the skin and the hair. And I'm going to increase the midtones to I get until I get to a point where I like the skin tones or I like the texture of the skin. Let's just say I like this point. Now I'm going to well, so this is what I mean. Sometimes I feel as though the highlights can be overbearing, and I don't like the shine on the nose, the shine on the arm. I just feel as though that looks too realistic. And you might say, oh, but don't you want it to be realistic? But me personally, I feel as though cinematography is about making a reality that makes life look better than it is, not necessarily as realistic as possible. This look might look good for commercials because it pops, but for our narrative work, I don't like this. And I mean, just ask yourself why films aren't shot uh, at 30 frames per second or higher. The majority of them are shot at 24 frames per second, even though that might not be realistic or how we see the world, right? So anyway, I'm going to decrease the gain. And I'm looking at the sky, and I'm looking at the arm and the nose, the highlight roll off. I'm going to lower that until it gets a little bit smoother. Let's just say over here. And now the shadows are obviously too dark, so we're going to increase exposure, uh, increase the shadows with the lift wheel. And you don't want to do this too much, uh, especially with the Sigma FP, and I'll, I'll tell you why later. 
So let's just say increase back there. Now the contrast might be a little bit off because we adjusted the shadows. So we're going to now massage the contrast and balance it out with the other wheels. Okay. All right. So I think this looks a lot better. Okay, let's take a look. I still think that it looks a little bit too hdr -y, so I'm going to decrease the highlights a little bit more. Now you can also decrease the highlights using the curves, or me personally, I like to use the highlight tab or the gain. So let's just do minus 30. Let's see how I feel about that. This is before, this is after. It just feels a little bit softer, you know, the sky isn't popping as much and yeah, I think I like this a lot better. Now you may prefer to be a little bit more exposed, a little bit brighter, but me personally, that's just my look. I just like things to be a little bit more contrasted, a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you why, now of course this is not finished, you know, skin tones. It is underexposed, so there's color shift. But I want to move on and tell you why you might not exactly want to increase your shadows too much. So I'm just going to copy the grade from the previous um, previous clip. And as you can see, the, the shadows are lifted, right? Now, I think a lot of people will be tempted to lift the shadows. They say, oh, the shadows are practically clipping. You can see from the parade, they're clipping, and they might want to increase the shadows like this. Now, I see this a lot, and I think this looks even worse. You know, it's just a murky gray, and I think it looks terrible. You can just leave the blacks as they are. Just leave them black, and then, I don't know, I just think this looks a lot moodier. Let's, uh, let's decrease the highlights. I think they're a little bit overpowering. Yeah, for me, I think this looks a lot moodier. I think this looks a lot better. Just leave the blacks as they are, and I think it looks very cinematic. Okay. All right, so let's go to another clip. This is well overexposed, and the Sigma FP does not like to be overexposed. So we're going to do the same thing. This is also going to be black magic color space with the Ari LUT. And what we're going to do here, <clears throat> We're going to, as you can see, there's too much contrast. So we're going to increase the gamma. Let's find a better frame. See the face more clearly. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now I'm looking at the hair and I'm looking at the face. And then I'm going to decrease the highlights because I think they're a little bit overpowering. Now you don't want to decrease the highlights too much, I think. At a certain point, if you decrease the highlights too much, sometimes you get some weird effects. Like you might see some like a white line or halo ring around, you know, some skin or the textures. So I find, you know, you don't need to do too much. And then the rest I'll sort of adjust with the gain wheel. Okay, and I will increase the shadows a little bit because it's a little bit dark. Not too much though. Okay, now let's just change the white balance a little bit. Let's change it to, let's see, 5,700, no, 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit more right. You know, I think I might want it to be a little bit colder. Okay, something like that. Okay, that looks a lot better. All right. So now let's try something a little bit different. Now for this clip, I think as you can see, I'm not clipping the highlights, I'm not clipping any shadows. I think I have enough dynamic range. So I think I can try something different. Now this one, we are going to change the color space to Sigma's native color space, which is P3, DCI, or D60, and then change the gamma. And I feel as though linear feels the best. Okay, now same thing, we're going to select highlight recovery and decrease the highlights. I always like to do that so I can see some clouds. And now we are going to color space transform. So 
we're going to have the P3 D60 or DCI as the input color space. The input gamma is going to be linear. And then the output color space, I like to work with DaVinci wide gamut. I feel as though it adds, it has a little bit more dynamic range. And also if you want to make any colors, then that also feels, it feels a lot better to work in that color space. And then we're going to color transform, uh, color space, um, color space transform out. And DaVinci wide gamut and we're going to have our output color space to be Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Okay. All right, now let's adjust the exposure. As you can see in this clip, there's not enough contrast. So we're now going to decrease our midtones in the Gamma wheel. And looking at the hair and the skin, I'm going to keep decreasing it until I see enough texture. I don't want to do too much like this. I think that will look very bad. But you know, just before it gets a little bit too too ridiculous. So I think that looks okay. Now the highlights are a little bit overpowering, so I'm going to decrease the highlights a bit with this bar and also the gain wheel. I'm looking at the clouds and I'm looking at the whites. Okay. Now it's just a little bit too dark. Now you might like this look maybe for like I don't know, at least morose scene, but that's not the look I was going for. So I'm going to increase the shadows just a little bit and then maybe reduce my gain again. Maybe just a little bit. Just keep massaging and keep changing it. Okay. Now this way, this method I think is more accurate for the Sigma colors, but it's a little bit desaturated. And you might want to add a little bit more saturation. And you can do that in many ways. Um, for example, one of the easiest ways I know of increasing saturation is by going into the curves and then going to the luminance for a saturation and just slightly increasing the overall saturation just slightly. OK, this is, this is before, this is after, before, after. It's quite subtle, but I think it makes a big difference. Okay. Let's take a look. All right, not bad. All right, let's do something similar for the next scene. So we are going to copy the previous grade. This time we're going to do something a little bit different. Now we're still using the P3D60 color space, but we're going to do a film emulation. So I'm actually going to change the output gamma of the last color space transform to Cineon film log. And then this way we can actually add one of DaVinci's film LUTs. And we do this by right clicking and then going to film looks. And then I like the Kodak 23831. one. That's, you know, a very classic one. And yeah, I think this looks quite moody. The exposure is a little bit off and the color temperature is also quite off. So let me see. Maybe the color temperature is more like 5600. And it's a little bit yellow, so I might make it a little bit more red. Okay. And then change the exposure. Maybe not so contrasty. Leave the blacks as they are. All right, let's take a look. All right, and I think that looks okay. It looks kind of interesting, right? You have more of the film look, and you can add as much green as you want uh, to fit your needs. Okay, finally, we're going to see how I deal with skin tones. So I'm going to borrow the grade from a previous node. Now, as you can see, the skin tones are quite off. So what I do, because I'm colorblind, is I like to use the vector scope to see and match the skin tones. Now, there's a skin tone indicator line right here. 
and as you can see it is leaning a little bit too yellow and you can also see it from the image so in order to see it more clearly I'm actually going to create a node and then go in the window and make a mask on the face we're going to match it and put it on the face as well as we can press shift H and isolate the skin on the face and now you can see the the, uh, the, the, the skin more clearly and then we're going to balance it with tint. Now, some people like to add and subtract colors like red or yellow. Me personally, I just like to use tint. And so uh, I'm going to increase my tint. Now, the color temperature is far, is, is far off. So I already know that this clip is going to be near 3200. Typically at nighttime, you know, especially with these tungsten types of lights, LEDs or you know, these evening lights, it's going to be around 2800 to 4400 so I think 3200 is typically where we're going to look and then I'm just going to change the tint until it gets pretty close to the skin tone line but not too not like this where it's a little bit too white too accurate you know because this it was shot at night with you know yellow lights so let's just do maybe something like there and it looks pretty good okay let's take a look disable it yeah I think that looks kind of nice now the contrast is a little bit too bright for my taste so I might decrease the the overall exposure add a little bit more contrast Get a little bit of shadows. So as you can see, this is not very complicated at all. I'm not really changing too much color or saturation, no node trees or complicated power windows. All I'm focusing on is the right contrast. And when you have the right contrast, you also have really nice saturation. Now, this process is really simple, but you don't need to make it more complicated when you have the lighting you want. I would never bring my camera out, let alone press record if the situation didn't have satisfactory lighting. When you have the correct lighting, then everything just works so much more smoothly and I have less work to do in post. So I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want more content, you can always join our Discord server where we sort of just chat, talk about gear. And also, if you have any more questions or maybe you want a clip or a file, you can always ask me for those things. I'm always very open about that. All right, cheers.